Hello and welcome again. This is Gertrude Mache here in Wellington, New Zealand. It is 10.28 in the morning. And as you know, I've been bringing you some really interesting people who have been telling us all kinds of tips, ideas with regards to your books, how you can sell them, how you can position yourself in the marketplace. Today I've got a very special friend who is based in Christchurch, right here in New Zealand, who specializes in handling your intellectual property. And our conversation this morning is going to be all around how to identify your IP. Her name is Jennifer Beck. Jennifer, welcome. Well, uh, hello. Thank you for having me. I'm going to hand over to you just to give us a brief introduction about who you are, you know, how you work in this particular arena, and how authors can tap into all of their intellectual property and find different ways to sell. Great. This is my favorite subject, a subject totally near and dear to my heart because as all of us start out, we all seem to be born with all these wonderful and just the prefer of ideas. We have things that we want to share, information we want to pass on, and then we put those ideas into either some type of product or a service or we start working in a business and are able to share that with the public, with our friends, with our families, with the consumer. So where I specialize and what I specialize in is I work with um, IP services. We're located here in Christchurch, New Zealand, and yes, we focus on IP strategy. It's all about strategy and taking your IP from the idea concept over to making it a tangible. So we have the initial thought process, that light bulb has gone off. We have an idea for a book and that's what our specialty and that's what we're speaking about. With that book though, with that idea, it comes down to, yes, we can write the book, we can put it all together, but do we have a strategy of how we're going to get it to the marketplace? Do we have a strategy of how we're going to have it end up and going to the consumer? What's, what is our business plan? And it all comes down to having that business strategy. We have you know, two sides of our brain, which most of us are aware of, that we have our artistic side and we have our, um, our, our logical side. We have the side of how do the processes work? What do we do next? So what I'd like to run through and share with you today is just plant a few seeds for you to think about as you're thinking about the message that you're striving to put into your book or that you're putting into your book and then how you're going to get that to the marketplace. So we're going to start with the importance of strategy and where that starts at, where it comes to, and then where it's going to end up. So with strategy, there is, um, you're going to sit there and basically think, okay, you know, who's my genre? Who am I writing for? What's my market? Am I writing for children? Am I working, writing for young adults? Am I writing for females? Am I writing for males? Do I have, you know, a certain economics, um, you know, that I'm writing for? Am I writing for a textbook? Am I writing for academics? So once you identify exactly what your, you know, goal is and the market is and your genre is, that's part of strategy. And that's actually, you'll put that down on paper and say, hey, I'm going to write this book and I'm going to do this for this person because of this and this is what I'm hoping to share with them. This is the message that I want to give to them. And then once you have your identification of things, you're going to look at how am I going to get that out to the marketplace? How am I going to capture the consumer? How am I going to share my idea with them? How am I going to take it from point A to point B? B to point C to point D so that they become aware of the message that I have to share. Or, and it comes down to also, you know, we can transition it into products. And that's when we're looking at strategy as well is how far can you take your idea? Can you, what's your outreach proposition? What's your outreach proposal? Can, does this work? And one of the things we specialize in is there's basically six different revenue streams or profit margins that you can look at to see if your idea can gain substance, can create a revenue stream from it. So if we have book as point A, product one, would that potentially move into a movie or into hypermedia? 
Could it be a motion picture? Could it be a cable movie? Could it be a network situation? Could there be an ongoing series? Could it become an, you know, something that's shown on Netflix? Could it become um, a TV series? Could it become a cable series? Could it do something on the internet? So you're starting to look, at, you've looked at your publishing, your traditional and now your non-traditional, which is basically going straight to e-publishing. Then you've got your hypermedia. You look at the gaming perspectives. What kind of gaming outreach does it potentially have? Is it working with the hard consoles, the games, you know, the boxes that you have in your house that you have to put the game in? Is this going to be an online game? Is this just going to be, you know, a simplistic one of the new technologies that they're working with? We've also got merchandise. Merchandise is actually one of the largest revenue streams that there is for any type of IP franchising. We've got apps and the mobile situation. Everything is now looking to be formatted because all of these formats for all these different platforms are different and they all have to be specialized and formatted and created for a specific genre or product that they're going to be servicing. And then we've got augmented reality which is just basically starting out of how to be able to capture some revenue streams from that. So again as you're looking at putting your strategy together and creating a business plan and all that type of thing, you're looking at your identification, your market capture, your outreach, and then you want to start looking about your entry. How are you going to enter the marketplace? What's your tools? What's your outreach capabilities? What's your marketing entry point? What's your launch? All of those things you know, become very vital as you're identifying scheduling and, and dates and what's happening in the world and who's your you know, what region are you going to be starting with first? Are you doing a global outreach? Are you doing a minimal outreach? All those types of things. As we're looking for, because the end goal is, for most of us, I believe, especially with the book situation, we are looking for saturation because we believe the story that we're writing can touch many hearts and can touch many souls. And we're wanting to get as many people to be able to look at our product as possible. So what is the saturation points that we're looking at? And then we're going to finally look at potential revenue streams and what is the financial potential prospects for us through those different markets that we've identified and through the different revenue streams that we've identified. And then also it is about creating your plan and having some type of, you know, the goals and things that you can take to collaborative partners because we're one person. We can only do so much. Each of us have specialties. Each of us do um, you know many different things but we can't do everything so you're looking for those good collaborative partners who are of the same mindset as you who can take your product and move it into the marketplace the way that you're hoping for and become basically your business partners and you know that is vital vital in finding you know an agent or a representative or you know the printing company excuse me that you work with or you know who's going to help you with your marketing plan who's going to help you with your entry levels who's going to do the maintenance who's going to fulfill the orders who's going to supply and facilitate your clients because you become as an author you become a brand you are the brand that they are striving to put together as an IP franchise you've got this an idea for a book but is this book going to be a one-off is it become a series does it have multiple series that it could potentially come into but it's all based around you and your name becomes very, very important and who you are because we're selling you as part of the plan. So with that, um, I hope that gives a little bit of an overview of strategy and the importance of strategy, the importance of identifying your market, the importance of your collaborative partners, the importance of just having something down so that you, you, know, you don't get too sidetracked or you don't just you know we get so excited and wrapped up in oh hey let's go write this book let's do this let's do that and we haven't quite thought through how we're going to take that book to market as everyone's aware publishing is totally changing it's a very different arena it is almost a whole new ball game the industry is just actually doing somersaults right now and flipping over backwards as to how to facilitate how to work together with traditional publishing how to work with together with internet and e-publishing, how to do these outreaches, what's the importance of an agent. So many of us can now basically become our own publishers. But it all comes back to your strategic entry, 
your strategic planning, your maintenance capabilities, and your collaborative partnerships. So those are vital as you're beginning to put your strategy together and how far you can go with your IP franchise. So I hope that gives a brief there, overview yeah. as to the beginnings of strategy. I'm going to stop you there, Jennifer, because I would just love for you for to, us to have a little quick recap on that. And um, like from my perspective, I normally like to give people practical examples of what's possible, and I always based it on what I've actually done with my books. So a lot of you know that I came back from Frankfurt, and I got quite a few opportunities in terms of having my book translated into foreign languages. One of the things that I or mistakes I made when I went into writing is that I didn't have a strategy. I just decided I was going to write my book and set it as a book and it kind of stopped there. But what has since happened is that so many other worlds have opened up to me because of these opportunities that I'm getting by networking with people who see other things in my book that I didn't actually see. So yes, your book can be the starting point, but you can generate multiple streams of income from your book. The book could end up being an audio book. Jennifer has mentioned that it would turn out to be a movie. It can turn into a game. There's multiple ways that you can position your content or your intellectual property. And what we're saying today is that it is crucial that when you're starting out, you take a step back and you work out the strategy around your book and see the big picture in terms of what you can actually do with that book besides producing it as a physical book or as an ebook. Now, Jennifer, there was a couple of um, words you said in your presentation that are new to me. Uh, you talked about augmented reality. Did augmented I? reality? Yes, what is that? I'm always wanting to learn new things. So augmented reality is basically where we become um, a character and we're becoming somebody else. So you, this is very um, doing working a, with a lot with gaming right now. So when you go into a game, you can become this character and it's augmenting who you are and you can put components into that character of... Um, you know, you'd like to have the blonde hair, you'd like to do this, you'd like to do that. But it's a representation of basically who you are. So from a gaming perspective, it's now kind of this long tentacle that's just, you know, getting out there. It's still, it's still I'm not going to say it's super new, but it's fairly new. People are still identifying that. But there's revenue streams that can be made from that. So as I just said, we put this into our identification process to add this as a new kind of, um, you know, hyperlink if you'll say, to um, being able to see where we might be able to take that. So augmented reality is about helping an individual customer become a character of something. Okay, well that's a new one that I learned this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so to recap, your book, besides being a physical book, can be an e-book, it can be an audio book, it can be a game, and the gaming world is huge. It could be a board game. It could be an electronic game. It could be an online game. There is just another world that opens out when you become an author. So I'll let you continue, Jennifer. Thank you for giving me that uh, information. Oh, my pleasure. That's what we're here for. We're here to share. So from that perspective of uh, where would you like to go to next to talking about strategy and the importance of you know how valuable it is. I mean, I, I think I've shared that for me, I started out, um, I mean, I've been writing since I was a teenager and I've written multiple things. I've written a couple of books that ended up in my garage because I didn't have a strategy of how to really take it to the marketplace. Um, I had submitted to some of the traditional publishers. I wasn't able to secure an agent, and I've got just kind of this. So this is my own personal experience, rejection after rejection. And from there, you kind of, you know, then you get sidetracked, and life kind of takes you places. And from my professional perspective, I really decided, because um, I've written a couple screenplays and things like that, I really decided to learn how the business work, the business side of it works. I went to school for business management and things like that. And um, when I was in Hollywood, 
learning about those things. It's it's basically comes down to you know who who holds the purse strings, who holds the pocketbook, and who how can they see the value of the product and the service that you have. So through the companies that I have been associated with over the past several years, and now through IP Services, it's really about amalgamating and putting together a strategy with a top-notch product. So it's being able to identify and if I can share anything with your audience is again we get all caught up in the moment and it's exciting about this idea that we have and within those moments of creation please see if you can set aside a few moments of logical <laughs> logic and logical thinking of thinking to yourself wow how far is this vision how far can I take this? Yes, I see this as a book and this is what I'm writing. And again, we can only do one thing at a time. We can only um, develop one thing at a time. But before you start your development phase, if you go into that visionary phase of how far can we reach and then you back up and create your steps, it saves you time, energy, money in the long run and can really help be beneficial you know if all of us we have most of us have plans for the day what are you doing for the day where do you need to be where, what are you identifying and those types of things so if we think about that from the book that we're writing how can we you know what's our plan for the book it just helps you um, be able to to realize that there's an outcome you're looking for your outcome and and what is that going to be and hopefully you know it makes it a little simpler for you Fantastic. Okay, so identifying your IP potential is what you're going to talk about next. Let's go into that. How do you identify your intellectual property potential and, and how can you actually help authors do this? How we help people is being able to look at, so people present us with basically a summary or an overview. They have final products like a book or a screenplay or a gaming component or something like that. We um, then ask them to present that to us. With that, then we go to um, being able to assess everything and we look at a whole bunch of different components. The strength of the characters, the market outreach, the, we do research on you know who your end consumer is and who you're trying to have be your fan basically it's all about creating a fan base are the characters strong enough that they're going to want to be seen in multiple books would people not only like the books but would they end up buying a game would they go to a movie do they want to become involved in the world of this character now there's a whole bunch of different books there's you know the fiction there's the nonfiction those types of things with the nonfiction even there's such a high capability if you can identify ahead of time of what your optimization is again it's coming back to the vision and this is why it's very valuable to find you know global strategists tacticians such as ourselves those that um, you know you can ask your friends and family as well it's like oh you know what do you think about the depth of this characters is there a character that you like is that as you know do you identify at this point with the way that the world is and how everybody become, can become so involved so quickly in things, people want to have an association. People want to uh, see themselves as a characters basically. Everybody's basically a character. We're all characters in this big global movie that's happening. You know, they identify with the celebrities, with the sports heroes. They identify with the books that they're then brought to screen. How can you um, you know when you're writing as well and this is it's very valuable to have feedback and it's valuable to be able to know hey um, you know this character is strong but maybe if you did this this or this this might help the character a little bit you know be a little bit stronger or make them more endearing or help something like that from a character perspective if you have a method a process a um, physiology or something that you're striving to teach which is for you know from an academic perspective or from the nonfiction perspective the how-to perspective it also comes down to having an overall vision an overall goal and then can that be broken down into multiple components can 
you know, we ha we know what the end result is, and maybe we write this book and it ends up being, you know, 300 pages or so. But if we look at it and identify, maybe we cut that in half, and it ends up being 150, and we add a few more worksheets at the end, or we help with the thought processes of, you know, striving to create some new habits for people, or to introduce a process that would be valuable to their life for them to, you know, choose to start doing as well. Um, are there component books that people can use? Are there, um, you know, what's the additional online support that can be given? Is there, you know, the, we've got the social media obviously is gigantic, but it's also about building fan clubs, building fan bases, and um, how you can create whatever your thought process is, whatever your idea is, how you can move that over to creating your fan base, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. You're striving to find the market that becomes a fan of what you're striving to share. Okay, now I, I have a question, and the question is actually based on, let's just have a little talk about fiction and nonfiction writers and the ways that they can really leverage off their intellectual property to create these multiple products. Now, I have my first book, as you all know, Born on the Continent is actually a memoir. And when I wrote the book, I was just writing about my life. But what I did do, um, which has turned out to be one of the biggest selling points for my book, is I incorporated an African philosophy called Ubuntu in this book. And I tried to illustrate the philosophy by wrapping the lessons through telling the story of my life. And what has since happened is that my book has crossed over from the memoir genre to the academic genre. Um, I'm now being hired to speak at universities and to lecture about Ubuntu because there's very little literature that has been written around this philosophy. And I've literally decided that I'm branding myself as the Ubuntu expert in the world. And I'm having fun with it because I've recently been contacted by a publisher in Iraq who have asked me to create a children's book explaining the Ubuntu philosophy. And storytelling is something I do very easily. I love writing children's stories. I wrote my first children's book in about three weeks, and it's going to be a series of three books. But to go with a book, because children learn through play, I've decided to create a board game as well that the children can play so they learn all the principles around Ubuntu. Now Jennifer mentioned product and I started thinking about what kind of product could go with this book. Now can you picture a children's board game that has little pieces on the game that they use to play the game. Those little pieces can be magnified and become artifacts that you can sell as well. I started thinking about things like jewelry, uh, maybe some bracelets, that could be sold and this whole new world has opened up for me that I hadn't seen in terms of my sharing my African culture. So I just wanted to throw that in there Jennifer because a lot of people don't realize how much they actually have. I didn't know how much I could share and at how many levels I could share my content and I just bumped into it accidentally by mistake. But imagine if you started off with a very clear strategy on how you're going to do this and you talk to a professional who can take a step back and say, look, this is what we see, and you attack your writing project in a completely different way. Now, Jennifer, I know that your strength is also in fiction books. Tell me the engagement you referred to in terms of people getting feedback from their potential readers and how your characters can be shaped and morphed by getting feedback from people who are potentially reading your book. You could probably blog a chapter at a time while you're writing and get feedback from people. Can we just talk a little bit about that, Jennifer? Yes. Um, well, congratulations. I think so. it's a <laughs> Thank you. I'm so happy. And yes, things like that ha do happen all the time. It's all about, you know, getting to the right person and it's something that you never even thought of crosses your desk and you're like, oh wow, this is such a possibility. And after we started talking about that, I mean, I myself also see it as 
not only the board game, but multiple different toys. I mean, puppets, learning educational things, all this type of stuff that all goes back to, fran to franchising, but also goes back to licensing which is where the merchandising comes in and having a licensing representative and those types of things. So um, again, that's a whole different area and things like that, but it's very exciting for you. And when doors open up that are created that, you, yes, you didn't even think about, you're like, oh, wow, what can I do with this? And this is okay. exciting. And this is going this way, and I thought it was going this way, but we'll go this way now. <laughs> so, And it's all about reworking things, but when you start with the plan, it's, I'm not going to say easier, but it helps you to be able to just have a working model. And then off of that working model, it's just a total draft, just like your book. You, you can switch it. You can change things in and out. You can identify, well, you know, I thought this back then, maybe this a year ago, but right now I don't see it then. Or if you decide that you want to launch this date and then you realize that too much is happening and you decide to put it out or to move it forward or things like that, that's what the strategic plan helps you do. Um, going back to identifying uh, with your nonfiction, I do highly recommend that you keep and your, or you find uh, people that can become, I call them, we call them review groups for yourself. Yes, you can have it go out to the world and blog, but I will say, and which everyone is aware of, once you're out on the internet, you're totally out on the internet. When you change things, it's very hard if it goes out and then you decide to totally switch things, People can Google and find out what it was before. That um, So we recommend that you keep that really close to home, that you find those people within a network of yourself and keep it private until you are actually ready to launch so you can enter and create a saturation point that is new, that's totally fresh and exciting, that no one's seen before except a small little collective group that has been your feedback group basically. Um, for whatever genre that you have. You've got your friends and family. Their friends, there's um, companies out there that have these groups that you can hire. Um, and then you can take on board their comments that you can utilize or not utilize and transition your characters or not because you had a different thought process. But as you're mapping out the goal, the end goal of that character and where they're going and what they're doing in the storyline, um, this information can be valuable because technically these are your end consumers and they can, um, you know, we all can think different things so they can give you inspiration where you may not have thought that before. And uh, it, it, it happens time and time again. So it's valuable to have that, but I do encourage people to keep that as a private situation until they're actually ready to launch. But, you know, your choice as to what you want to do. Um, but again, because you're trying to enter and you're trying to create a new series, or you're trying to create a new product line, when you can enter under your own circumstances and kind of keep that close to the best, and so from a business mentorship perspective, um, that's what we've always recommended. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense. Thank you for that. That makes an absolute a lot of sense. So Jennifer, how can people get access to you? How can people contact you to solicit your help? Uh, you have our, we're located at ipservicelimited.com and you can email us at success at ipservicelimited.com or Skype us at ipservicelimited. Fantastic. Uh, we look forward to hearing from anybody and anybody that we might be able to uh, you know, offer assistance to. Awesome. Thank you so much for this interview, Jennifer. I think... Um all of our listeners today out there who have got books, are thinking about writing books, who have content that is of value, you've really given us all some food for thought in terms of where we can all go with our publishing businesses because literally once you start writing, especially if you're a self-published author, you've gone into business and yeah. you really have to have a strong strategy before you put yourself out there and know exactly what game you're playing, what products you can produce so that you can succeed. Yes. Thanks again for the you interview, Jennifer. All about so you don't fall over. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really enjoyed talking to you this morning. Thank you. It was a pleasure.